produced. And essentially determining whether or not you can duplicate it. Now, scientists aside, what was your emotional response? What were you thinking were the implications to the world or man in general from these revelations? I really didn't think about implications of, of, of that sort. As far as emotionally, uh, people have asserted that, boy, that must have been the most exciting time in your life. And I, that's not the way it was. When I first got to look inside the craft, the, the, all I can say, it's an ominous feeling. You walk in there and uh, it's, it feels as if you shouldn't be there. I know that sounds kind of corny, but it's a real ominous feeling. It's not an exciting feeling. Uh, it brings up a whole lot of questions in your mind. Well, where did this come from? And you know that they won't give you the answers to the whole story, but it's, uh, that's the only way I can describe it. How many craft are housed at S4? And are they, in fact, all dish-shaped? There are nine, and their shapes vary. I only got to do a close inspection on one of them. Uh, the others I just briefly saw, and they, they pretty much varied. I give everything nicknames there. The one I worked on was kind of sleek looking, and I gave it the name of the sport model. Uh, there was one that looked like a jello mold. There was one that looked like a top hat. Uh, there was a disc that was turned up on its side, and it had a large projectile hole with the metal bent outwards on it. Uh, I can only surmise they were testing it to see if uh, you know, a projectile could penetrate it. Of course, it's just a guess on my part. But for the most part, they were pretty, pretty varied. How many times did you enter the disc, or did you only enter the sport model? I only entered the sport model. The other ones, I wasn't uh, allowed to loiter around, to go near, really even to look at. I just, at one point, walking through the hangar doors, all the bay doors between all the hangars were open, and I got a, a glimpse all the way down uh, of the whole corridor. But that was the only time it was ever open. Tell us about the lower level of the craft where the gravity generators are located. The lower level of the craft, the floor itself is hexagonal, little hexagonal squares. And the hatch, or if you want to call it a hatch, the access way to get in there is an ingenious little assembly. It's a honeycomb structure. And if you put your fingers in one end of the honeycomb and push, all the honeycombs will collapse in on each other, making a hole. It's kind of a neat, uh, a neat doorway, something that we could, you know, use. I, I don't know what for, but I mean, it's it, it's something that I haven't seen before, and it, it's kind of a novel idea, but a very efficient, lightweight, very strong uh, access way. Uh, I had to hang upside down in there to see the lower. Uh, the lower level, essentially. And there were three large gravity amplifiers. These devices looked like about a two-foot diameter, four-foot long piece of pipe hanging by a smaller piece of pipe from the level above. And they can be independently positioned. Uh, and that's what, what emits the gravitational waves that propel the craft. The second level was the only other level that I was on. It was the main level. Uh, that contained the reactor where the seating was, the gravity amplifiers themselves, though we also called the devices that hung down on the lower level the gravity amplifiers because they were really one and the same. They were probably the waveguides or horns, if you want to relate that to microwaves. Um, and really, that's about it. That's all that was on that level. So it's assumed this was not made for a human pilot. It would be extremely inconvenient for a human pilot. Humans really can't even function in there the, because of the ceiling clearance. Uh, the seats were so tiny. Uh, it was obviously made for a creature much smaller than a human. How does the craft achieve lift? It produces a gravity wave, which is similar to the gravity wave that the Earth produces. However, the craft phase shifts the wave. In other words, it, it turns the wave not really in an opposite polarity, but something to that effect, where it will work against the natural gravity wave of the Earth, and it produces lift in, in that effect. 
Is there any internal protection for the crew? Does the craft generate a, a, a gravitational field inside the craft itself? Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Being inside that field essentially doesn't shield you, but it, essentially you're in, <laughs> and this is a, a terrible way to say it, almost in a different realm, because you're you're now influenced only that by that gravitational field. For instance, people wonder how a craft like this can make a turn at such high speed, a 90 degree turn, when they would imagine people slamming up against the wall or something to that effect. Well, that, that really wouldn't happen. Inertia would have no effect. Uh, you're, you're in a distortion. And don't forget that gravity distorts time and space. So really nothing is going to influence you while you're in there. Describe the gravity amplifiers for us and some of their different operating configurations. There are three amplifiers. The craft can operate on a single one, can lift off the ground. The way in which it's propelled are two different ways. There's what they call Omicron configuration, where the craft is using one generator. Uh, or delta configuration, where it's us utilizing all three. Delta configuration would be for space travel. Essentially, the craft will tilt up on its side, as opposed to a science fiction movie where you see a flying saucer moving around. The craft will tilt up on its side, focus the three gravity generators to a single point, and move through space that way. Moving around a source of gravity is a problem to a disk because it's interference, essentially. So what they do is they work with that interference to their benefit. They'll use one gravity generator to lift the craft off the ground. And as opposed to what we're used to, for instance, a plane, once it's in the air, we envision thrust or some force coming out the back of it to push it forward. The crafts work completely opposite of that. What they do is once they're hovering in the air, they'll swing the gravity, two remaining gravity generators up in front of them and create a distortion, essentially a downhill. And the craft rolls downhill for infinity. It's always chasing a little distortion. That's why they look goofy when they fly around at low speed, because they're essentially, and any time you run over, you know, the gravity field around the Earth is not completely constant and stable, depending on the minerals and density of the Earth underneath it the gravity will vary somewhat and you will get odd movements of the craft. So its low speed mode is, is kind of unstable for the most part. I only witnessed one test flight up close officially. Uh, that I was in, just inside the hangar. Uh, the test was going off probably, you know, uh, just as the sun was going down. And it was a, a low performance test. I believe there were uh, some pilots or test pilots in the craft. The craft must have been retrofitted to fit them because the seating arrangements were really not accommodating. Um, they were in radio communication with the craft, which is kind of surprising to me because the gravity waves that the craft was producing should have uh, distorted the radio waves also. So uh, apparently there's something there that I don't understand. Um, the craft lifted off the ground, uh, virtually noiseless, other than a small corona discharge on the bottom of the craft, indicating the presence of high voltage. Uh, that dissipated at about 30 feet, and it stood there completely silently and moved over to the left and to the right and sat back down. That was the entire uh, test. However, that was an extremely impressive test. Uh, maybe to someone that really knows little about science or anything, that, that wouldn't be a whole lot. But you have to realize this craft was about 52 feet in diameter. I don't know exactly how much it weighed, but it weighed a lot. And uh, this was quite, quite a scientific feat, to lift something completely silently, under control, and uh, you know, perform a maneuver like that.